Rod, in trying to understand the brain, it's always amusing to look at different eras in the, in the history of understanding where people thought that the brain worked by the latest technology of the time. So the, at the turn of the 20th century, it was maybe like the telephone exchange, putting, pulling wires in and out, and then maybe it became, I don't know, quantum mechanics or... No, uh, I think it became a digital computer. Digital computer. And it became a massively parallel yeah, digital computer. Right, right. Now hologram. Holograms <laughs> were in there, and, yeah. and, and in 2003, someone asked me a question in a talk, and I thanked them for asking me the question. They put up their hand and they said, isn't the brain just like the World Wide Web? Yeah. And I knew that question right. was going to come right, eventually. Right, right, So what was that 2003? Okay. <laughs> because we always, we always take our most complex technology and use it as, as analogies for non-technological things, and we've been doing that with the brain for yeah, literally hundreds of years. Yeah, and trying to understand the brain. And, and in some sense, all of those analogies have some truth in it. But at the end of the day, though, a lot of them are based on this sort of computational theory that the brain is doing computations. Now, we know from, from artificial intelligence in the, in the machines that, that play chess that they are certainly working very differently than the human brain is working. So what can we learn uh, from AI about the brain, about the models, about this computational model? Well, I, I think AI may have led us astray somewhat yeah. because <laughs> AI has been successful with a computational model. Yeah, right. But if we look at, and, and so now we, we think of neurons as, as computing, we think of uh, information content in, in the messages between neurons when a spike goes mm -hmm. uh, from one to the other. But if we step back and we think from an evolutionary perspective, how did neurons come about? When we're talking about the hardware of the brain. Mm -hmm. How did neurons come about? Well, neurons really, uh, started out as different sorts of cells and they had electrical properties on their surfaces and over, over evolutionary time they came to do various sorts of control and some of the earliest neurons occur in, in jellyfish. And one of the things that the neurons in these early jellyfish is for is to synchronize all the parts of the, of, of the uh, circular part of the jellyfish so they all <laughs> contract at the same yeah, time. Right. And it, it's a synchronization mechanism. Uh, another behavior some of these jellyfish have with a s completely separate nervous system is that they can push food into, a, into an inlet to, mm. to digest. So they're sort of attracting food. So the two metaphors for me there about understanding neurons in that case are synchronization mm -hmm. and sort of a force field of mm -hmm. attraction, mm -hmm. which is very different from computation. Mm -hmm. When you think about it as computation, I'm not sure that was related to the building blocks evolution was keeping consistent as it evolved. Because evolution only works when lots of stuff is consistent and little things change. So I think we may have gone overboard with our information um, processing metaphors, somewhat due to the success of AI. And we may be looking for things in neurons and looking for organizations and structures that in computational terms that may not necessarily be well, there. There is some superficiality that looks similar. You, in a neuron, you have a spike of electricity either happening or not at any given moment, and that's sort of like a digital thing. It, it, it may or may not have some gradation, but, but when it happens, it happens at the same level. So you have sort of a digital response, and that does seem similar to a digital. Yes, and activity. if you go back and look at some of the original papers from the 1940s, McCulloch and Pitts mm -hmm, uh, often uh, referred to as for inventing neural information processing. Mm -hmm. And they looked at neurons and they said, oh, and they, so they did real experiments with neurons, famous papers that they were involved with, with real biological systems. But they abstracted that away to logic gates. Mm -hmm. And could you have neurons that performed the AND function, right. where it's, oh, you only get a spike on the output if there are two spikes right. on the input? Yeah. Or can they maybe be the OR function, where you get a spike on the output when either of the two inputs yeah, spikes? Right. And that was the level of their, their metaphor. In fact, the famous British mathematician Turing, who is responsible for our current models of computation, looked at those models, and in his, it, unfortunately his life was cut very short in 1954, but he was looking at some of those models and saying, this isn't quite enough. This, th there's more to mm. neurons. But we went into this computational approximation, which McCulloch and Pitts knew was an approximation, but I think the students who followed sort of took that and ran with it, and then the models got more complex, but I think we got led astray. So what are some other um, ways that we can amplify a, uh, a, a model of how the brain works? I mean, 
we see those spikes of electricity. It looks like it could be a, a simple computational. If that's not working, what, what more is there? What, what more can we do? Well, we could, we could, the way I like to think about it is, is what is the resultant behavior and what are the um, uh, properties of these networks? And if you look at neurons in any, in any creature, um, there's lots of neurons and the exact circuitry is different between each sure. one. They wire up dynamically. Mm -hmm. So that says that any computation they're doing is somewhat more from bulk properties mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. as we have in a computer where every bit has to operate precisely yeah, right, accurately right, from the right. Turing model of computation. I think that, that thinking in terms of not what is the output, but what is the process, which is very robust to, you know, you can cut 10% of the neurons just with a scalpel, yeah. and the, you can't tell the difference yeah. in the behavior right. of the system. Right. Right. So what is, it, what is the mathematics of such systems that are so robust and so adaptable, I think could lead to a different sort of set of answers. Well, we know in the brain that, that memory, for example, you, if you take certain parts, you take a lot of the brain out, and you still have all the memory, maybe a lot of some degradation of some kind. But it certainly looks like uh, um, a, a lot of redundancy. Certainly, there's a lot of plasticity in the brain. I, I, Stroke I, victims uh, over a year or two can totally get new function back, even though that part of the brain was destroyed, because other parts can take over. So there's certainly a lot of of, of uh, robustness and plasticity. Yes, and even in the in, if you go to the simplest creatures, which have recognizable brain centers mm -hmm. as distinct from just nervous systems, um, polyclad flatworms. A whole series of experiments was done starting in the 50s where they were doing brain transplants between <laughs> these polyclad yeah. ones. And I'm guessing that a graduate student made a mistake because suddenly a set of papers come around with what happens when you put the brain in backwards <laughs> in the other one. And what happens is, well, the creature starts walking backwards for a few days, but after that it's okay and yeah. it's indistinguishable from one where the brain was put in the right way. Yeah. And you take the whole brain out, by the way, the creature still survives. <laughs> It, it just isn't as good at various yeah, physical yeah, activities. Yeah. So that's, to me, a, a different set of properties than computation has. And so I worry, and, and I've been to many workshops where people, neuroscientists, talk about we have to find the underlying computational principles right, of the brain. Right. We may be disappointed. That might be why they're so hard to find.